What's up Guardians and welcome to my weekly Zer builds. A series that aims to create a Gambit build for each class out of the exotics Zer has on offer every week. These exotics may or may not be the best. They may not even work at all. But damn it! I'll build them anyway. This week, Zer comes to us with the following exotics. For the weapon, the Arbalest Linear Fusion Rifle for 27 shards. Hunters can purchase the Oathkeeper Gauntlets. Titans can get the ACDO Feedback Fence Gauntlets. And Warlocks are offered the Stag Helmet. As always, each armor piece is priced at 23 shards. So let's dive right in by taking a closer look at the weapon. The weapon is the Arbalest. The exotic perk for this is it fires slugs that cause massive damage to elemental shields of enemy combatants. The other perk, Disruption Break, means breaking an enemy shield with this weapon makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage for a brief period. What these perks mean is that you can use one shot to take down an enemy shield, the next shot is going to do increased damage to that enemy because the Arbalest is kinetic. However, we are going to go more into that later on. The exotic perk for the Oathkeeper is simple. Bow's charges can be held indefinitely. The bow we are going to be using for this is the Lemonic. Arrows fired quickly after a full draw become poison arrows. Precision hits with poison arrows spread poison to nearby enemies. And by using the Oathkeeper, we get rid of the need to release arrows quickly and we'll always get poison arrows. We are maximizing the Oathkeeper's perks of the Reaper build and pairing this with Top Tree Night Stalker. This will allow us to use our super to create a large tether connecting multiple enemies for widespread poison damage using the Lemonic. For our kinetic weapon, we are using a submachine gun for up close and personal fights and the whirling guillotine for the power weapon. This will allow us to deal with yellow bars and heavily damage the primeval. Our mod selection supports our intellect stat for a faster super generation. We are also focusing on maximizing the bow and sword using bow targeting, freeloader, and precision charge to get charged with light. For the sword, we're using sword scavenger, reserves, and lucent blade to increase our sword DPS. The Oathkeeper is good at one job, and it's completely unnecessary. In Gambit, frankly, it's a near useless exotic for hunters. I was genuinely excited for this when it first came out in year two, because as well as its current effect, it was also supposed to increase draw speed, which would have decimated the competition if paired with the Trinity Ghoul. However, that effect didn't work on release and instead of fixing the bug, Bungie decided to change the weapon description to match its one effect. So unless you just want to look good while you're invading, keep this exotic in Crucible or collecting dust in your vault. Moving on to the stag, the exotic perk for this is as follows. Grants Rift Energy when you are critically wounded. On your death, creates a brief healing rift on your corpse. Obviously, we are working with rifts standing in one place, making it good for a sentry build. We have paired this with Bottom Tree Arc to give us an extra turret with an Arc Soul. This also benefits our teammates. We are going to be pairing this with the Arbalest, making this a Reaper Sentry Hybrid. For our energy weapon, we are using the trusty Scout Rifle for an alternate range weapon, and the Commemoration Heavy Machine Gun, because I just got the God Roll and I wanted to try it out. To help with Rift Recovery, I have a total of plus 50 in Recovery Mods, and for the Arbalest, we have Linear Fusion Rifle Ammo, Finder, Loader, Reserves, and Scavenger. This should give us the best chance of optimizing the exotics in this build. For me personally, I don't find that the Stag is a top tier exotic, or even a mid tier exotic for Gambit builds. But for a newer player, it'll do fine until you can get the Crown of Tempest of the Nezarek Sin. They have a much better Rift Regeneration with the Arc and Void subclasses. The Arbalest, however, is great at contending with Yellow Bars at long range, so much so it alone can turn an average Rift Sentry build into a competent Reaper Hybrid. You can also use this to invade, but the slower charge time might make you vulnerable to enemy snipers. And for the last exotic, we have the ACDO Feedback Fence. Melee kills build up explosive energy within the ACDO feedback fence. Being struck by a melee attack unleashes this energy in a devastating explosion. As we are focusing on melee attacks, this is the perfect exotic for a collector. We are pairing this with Middle Tree Solar so we can become Thor with a throwing hammer that recharges your melee and gives health regeneration, increasing our damage with each successful kill. We will be using the Monte Carlo so if you do not pick up your hammer, you can quickly recharge your melee and get back to destroying Jotunheim in no time. Did I just say that?
Our energy and power weapons are completely obsolete at this point, so if you have a preferred choice, go for them, but they will be rarely needed. Since picking up our hammer gives us instant melee regeneration, we don't need to worry about strength. Our mods instead focus on high resilience to keep us alive for longer. Otherwise, we also have striking light, charged up, taking charge, supercharged, shield break charge. Are you noticing a pattern yet? We'll be able to have up to five stacks of charge with light. So unless we die, we'll always be dealing extra damage and generating orbs for our allies. And as long as we keep moving, striking light gives us extra damage resistance from melee damage. <laughs> oh, damn. This actually works. I was doing this as a gimmick, but this is actually a legitimate build for Gambit. Doing heavy damage on yellow bars, quickly destroying blockers, and if your aim is on point, enemy invaders should watch their step. This is my favorite build of the week. The ACDO feedback fence is easily parable with lots of weapons and subclasses, making it fun to experiment with and keep the modes coming all day long. So overall, Zer's exotics for this week were pretty dismal, with the exception of the feedback fence, which was genuinely a fun surprise to start the weekend. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of these builds in Zer's exotics, and don't forget to like and subscribe.